One of the reasons to like Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler's had a hard life. I'll get into that in a second. But when asked about his tough childhood, no victimization. And God, that stuff lives over the internet 24-7. Jimmy Butler said, there's nothing to feel sorry about with me. I love what happened to me. I'm grateful for the challenges I've faced. Don't make people feel sorry for me. God, I love Jimmy Butler. I said it yesterday. If you give me the best player in the series, and I think it's Butler, and you give me a significantly better coach, Spo, you give me another high-end player, Bama to Bayou, against a team that sometimes lacks an identity late in games, you can't tell me they don't have a shot. I still think Boston wins. But as I predicted, I'm going to pat myself on the back, Tatum would not be as dominant. You got Tatum and Jimmy Butler, toe-to-toe. Tatum didn't take a shot in the fourth quarter, a field goal. That's insane. But sometimes it's who he is. He's not MJ. But a different life. He's not Kobe. He's closer to Andrew Wiggins. He's kind of elegant. And he's more talented than Andrew Wiggins, but... Andrew Wiggins was a number one pick. Andrew Wiggins is really talented. Tatum feels to me a bit more like him. Wiggins has great nights, and then he disappears when you need him most. Yes, Tatum had a great game seven against Philadelphia. The Sixers quit. They quit. What does Miami not do? Quit. I like Tatum. I like him a lot. But when you juxtapose Butler and Tatum on the floor together, They're not only different players, they're different people. They've had different childhoods. They've had different journeys. Jimmy Butler kicked out of his house by his mom, had to go to a junior college, abandoned by his father. The toughest people I've ever met in my life have often come from lives of turbulence and chaos, and they've had to fight through it, and they build these calluses. But Jimmy Butler says, don't feel sorry for me. It's who I am, and I love what it's made me. God, how do you not love him? By the way, I'm not saying Jason Tatum's life has been all rosy. Mom was a lawyer, prep school, Duke, didn't have to move around. The Celtics have always had his back. They're different. They're different people. Sometimes Tatum defers. Jimmy takes games over. Doesn't mean he's selfish, but he is a street fighter. And when you make Miami an eight-and-a-half-point underdog, you give a team with four undrafted players and the great Jimmy Butler, one of the only NBA stars in league history who is significantly better in playoff games than the regular season. He's the anti-James Harden. You get, you get a game that looked like last night. That doesn't mean Tatum won't have more great games. It doesn't mean Tatum can't be tough. But if I said lock Tatum and Butler in a room, turn the lights off, one comes out in five minutes, who you taking? I know who I'm taking. And these playoff games, for years and years, they're about men. They're about fight. They're about will. That's what they're about. I know. Draymond punched a player. So did Michael. Go read the Jeff Perlman book on Kobe and Shaq. Kobe was relentless, at times unbelievably obnoxious. Will wins these games. Miami's got more talent. But that thing felt... It, it had a little, when I watch Tatum, I see Sugar Ray Leonard. I see refined and elegant. When I see Butler, I see Marvin Hagler. <laughs> I mean, that guy is ready for a fight. And you make him an eight and a half point dog and you say he's got no shot in the series. And that's what it looks like. That line last night, we said it yesterday, was disrespectful. I love both these players, but they're different guys. They're different personalities. They've had different journeys. Doesn't mean one's better than the other. Butler's like, don't feel sorry for me. Tatum's like, I'll be back. And I think he will. I wouldn't be shocked if in game two, Tatum didn't drop 40. <laughs> but to not have a, sh- a field goal in the fourth for Tatum, to have two traveling calls in the last 90 seconds, it just was kind of predictable. By the way, since the start of the 2020 playoffs, Jimmy Butler is tied for third with the most wins, more than Steph, LeBron, Booker, and KD. An impossible player. Jimmy Butler is what we wish all of our favorite players were. Better in the playoffs. Never back down from a fight. Life's not been perfect. Never a victim. He plays hard. He gets hurt. Tatum will bounce back. You know he will. 
Jason's got some fight in him, but when you watch those two on the floor last night, their facial expressions, how they played late, how they demanded the ball, it, those are two different dudes with two different styles. They're both great for basketball. That was one of my favorite playoff games I've watched. That was absolutely one of the best two and a half hours I've spent watching pro basketball in a long time. And my guess is Boston rallies and comes back very strong, backed into a corner in game two and evens it up. All right, so there was a story, and I was reading a lot about this yesterday. I like to read in the afternoon and meditate. But uh, Victor Wembanyama is going to the San Antonio Spurs. I believe the right place for him to go. San Antonio knows what they're doing. They've done this before. It's grown-ups, one coach. The seven teams after them who wanted Victor Wembanyama have had 25 coaches in 10 years. Hard pass. But um, a lot of people don't know what to make of the fact he's called the best prospect ever. And people are uncomfortable with it. If the kid can't handle being called the best prospect ever, not going to be great. The truth is, there are people called scouts. They do it for a living. And they're right a lot. They were right with LeBron and Tiger Woods at 11. Shaq, Peyton Manning, Elway, Bryce Harper, Sidney Crosby, Serena Williams, Mike Tyson at 19. They're right a lot. What about Ben Simmons? What about him? All-star, year two. All-NBA, year four. Rookie of the year. Six, ten and a half, could defend, handle, and distribute score at the rim. He just got weird. The two things that screw up these legacies, like child actors, drugs and weird. And in the NBA or NFL or baseball, it's injuries are weird. Ben Simmons got odd. But do not deny Ben Simmons was unbelievable. I talked to a scout. Many believed, not a few, he was the best out of high school, one-year prospect, either a high school or college prospect for a year, best since LeBron. Six, ten and a half, a more athletic, stronger Magic Johnson. People felt that. And he was really good. Really good. Then he got odd. But scouts know what they're doing, and they mostly get these generational talents right. It's like tech startups. Yes, there's a lot of misses. Facebook bought Instagram when Instagram had 13 employees. The smart people saw it. They saw Airbnb, PayPal, Uber. The really smart money, the really, really, the billionaires. It's funny how they all collectively always sign up for the big bets. That doesn't mean, as angel investors, they don't have misses. And it doesn't mean scouts sometimes can't predict that Ben Simmons suddenly won't like basketball. Or that Greg Oden will fall apart. Or Sam Bowie. It happens. But I got a phone call from Brian Berger. I remember this. He worked at, 19, or at, worked at Nike. Brian Berger worked at Nike. He's probably listening today. He listens all the time. Dwight Howard was 14. I said, what are you doing? Because I used to live in Portland with Brian. We'd go for lunch. He goes, hey, I'm in a Nike. They found the next great center. What's his name? Dwight Howard. I'm, I'm in Florida watching his, uh, some tournament. I'm like, how old is he? 14. <laughs> the basketball culture used to reward back to the basket centers. And so the sport, after about seven years in the league, moved away from Dwight Howard. But the Nikes, you know, the, the, the Adidas is, the shoe companies, the scouts, they can spot great. Barring weirdness or an injury, Victor Webanyama is going to bring titles and be really, really special for Greg Popovich in the San Antonio Spurs. This is what they do. Go to your Reddit board. You know more. But they were right on Tiger and Elway and Manning. They were right. The GMs that thought Brett Favre was amazing when he was drinking too much down with the Atlanta Falcons. Remember those stories? And Ron Wolf, the best GM in the league, said, that's your next star. Nobody on a Reddit board back then. First of all, there was no Reddit. Second of all, everybody's great knowing after something great happens. Scouts know it when these kids are 11, 12, 13. Go look at the LeBron story. Just read the book. The LeBron book, Jeff Benedict. People knew it. Tiger Woods at 11 years old, IMG, because he was so young, they had to do it privately. They'd sign him to a deal. So I think Victor's going to be amazing, barring weirdness or an injury. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show.
Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.